Hey guys, welcome to Adventures of Malibu and Dad. Today we're going to see Andersonville Prison. It's a National Historic Site. During the Civil War, this was the POW camp for the Union soldiers. And uh, we're going to show you a little bit of history of what happened back then during this uh, crazy time during the Civil War. So we're here at the National Cemetery area of Andersonville, and right as you enter, man, you can see the mass graves for all the uh, dead prisoners here. Most, uh, if not all, Union soldiers who died here at Andersonville. And the statue reads, turn you to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope, Zechariah 9:12. Very fitting. Hey guys. So all the graves you're going to see here today in Andersonville, each and every one of these, if you look at the headstones, are side by side. The death rate was 100 per day were dying in this prison. Uh, this was Anders Andersonville Prison for... Uh, Union soldiers who were captured and they were just dying in record numbers and they just mass grave buried right here shoulder to shoulder so we're going to take you around and show you uh, some of the dark sides you know sad things about war and uh, some of the atrocities that happened to some of these uh, Civil War soldiers here in Georgia in Andersonville just come along as we take a look around guys So we're in section K, and you can see rows and rows and rows of Union dead. These are all POWs, prisoners of war, during the Civil War time. Let me get you some of these names here. So there were some that were unknown. There's a soldier from Illinois, one from New York, Tennessee. Michigan, there's a corporal in New York, C. Smith, Michael Robel, and the names just go on and on and on, guys. So there was some atrocities that happened here. And the way they knew about each and every one of these names and how they were finally honored here is by a gentleman who they assigned by prison officials and they assigned a guy named Dorrance Atwater this picture you just saw and he actually smuggled the names of each and every soldier that was buried here in his lining of his jacket that way someday these lost souls who died here in this POW camp will be remembered. And they are remembered today now. And that's how all these names were able to be placed here at the cemetery, which is a national cemetery right next to Andersonville. And they were buried shoulder to shoulder. It's what they call trench burials. There was so many dying every day. They didn't have time for coffins. They just buried them in the trenches. If there was any clothing that was any good, they were buried naked. And that's a, a true tragedy of what occurred here. Of course, since then, obviously now they have the Geneva Convention and foreign countries, uh, you know, they sign off to the Geneva Convention of treatment of prisoners of war. Of course, we know Vietnam some of the other wars, World War One and Two, a lot of that stuff wasn't even adhered to. Uh, treatment got a little better, but not by much. And some of those other conflicts, you know, that came along. So it's uh, it's kind of sad. But I guess you know it's happened in almost every war. The prisoners are you know mistreated, and uh, hopefully one day there'll be no more wars and no more prisoners. I don't know. We'll see what history brings on that one. So this monument here 
It's from the state of Iowa. And Iowa honors the turf that wraps their clay, the unknown. Their names are recorded in the archives of their country. And you're going to see a lot of monuments like this that show a lot of the northern states who mark the graves of these brave Union soldiers that fell. And guys, there are thousands and thousands of graves here. I think there's more here than I've ever seen anywhere, even at Hollywood Cemetery in Virginia. And now you can still be buried here, if you like, because this is a national cemetery. The smaller stones here you're seeing are the actual uh, Union dead. And then to the back there are uh, national cemetery burials that are, you know, current out of Civil War era. But all these here, guys, are all the ones who died at Andersonville Prison. And here's a copy of their names. Let's take you around. Just more graves, guys. I wanted to show some of the names. Interesting point about the Civil War. I'm sure this probably happened on both sides. Is that uh, a lot of prisoners did die. They were malnutritioned, maybe misnourished, uh, not given the proper medical attention. Whatever and however they died. This is a very dark side of war history, very dark side of the Civil War. These people suffered the way they did and died the way they did. As you know, usually when you're a POW, you should be given uh, good treatment, somewhere to sleep, eat until you're released after the war or exchange for other prisoners. And these guys, they get that chance. There's another really cool monument in the state of Illinois. And Abraham Lincoln actually has a uh, couple of things here. And part of history is remembering the dark side. You can't erase history. You can't take it away. You can remember it and learn from it. And that's what's important. Here's what... Uh, Abraham Lincoln said, We here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Abraham Lincoln. That was the Gettysburg Address. Beautiful monument. And there's more graves there. There's thousands and thousands. I don't know the total number. I'm going to see if I can find that out. But there is a lot here, guys. And every one of these guys should be remembered. Because they're all brave heroes. Who died for their side and their ideas. And what they believed in. And they're all veterans. Let's honor them. So this is the New York Monument. It was dedicated to the New York Monument in April 29, 1914. And you see the ladies here. 
at the actual monument in 1914. And this is for the state of New York and their uh, Union dead who died here at Andersonville. And it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful monument. So is this monument erected by the state of New York commemorates the patriotism, sacrifices, and fortitude about 9,000 New York soldiers of the Union armies in the War of the Rebellion who were confined in the Confederate States military prisons in Andersonville, Georgia, of whom 2,261 are known to have died in prison and were buried in this cemetery. So, wow. 2,261 died. So that's, uh, oh, that's a lot. So these are the current uh, grave sites and uh, statues of veterans who died in Vietnam, World War II, World War I, and uh, some of their wives and families. So if you still be in tuned here, and then there's the uh, Another angle of all the ones who died from Andersonville. Take you over here. Section J. There's another monument erected here. This is by New Jersey. And they're remembering their POWs who died here. It's a beautiful uh, monument to the Union dead here. It says, death before dishonor. And that's what they did. Well said. More the names. So many over us. Also, it was stated in one of the uh, placards out here that these original stones that are now stone were originally wood and they were all replaced by these marble headstones. So they started off as wood and they were replaced with solid concrete marble headstones. I think that's uh, pretty neat. Some more names. Here's another monument. And this is the state of Connecticut. They also, in memory of the men of Connecticut who suffered in the Southern Military Prison. From 1861-65. It's a great tribute there from this state of Connecticut. This was kind of what Andersonville prison looked like. The tents and a big prison wall. And all the soldiers behind the walls in prison. It's remarkable how big that wall was, just full of prisoners. So part of the uh, part of the cemetery slash POW site here in Georgia in Andersonville is they have the museum, which is it was very dark, very sad, uh, too dark to actually film inside uh, with this particular lens that I have. But uh, went inside; it's uh, worth the visit for sure. 
And this is what the uh, walls look like. And that's a guard post. And on the other side of that giant wall, they'd keep the prisoners. As depicted in the photo I showed you. And this is one of the springs here. It's on site. And you can check out. So we are guys, a uh, really neat story of all this darkness with the Andersonville prison. In 1864, the prisoners here were, uh, you know, pretty destitute, hardly any food or water. It was a rainstorm in uh, 1864 where the prisoners saw a bolt of lightning hit this area. And out of this area came a stream of life-giving water to those prisoners that were thirsting to death. To death. Um, amazingly, I think it was an act of God. And here they were in dire need of water. There's no lakes or rivers around here. Lightning strikes a spot next to a tree and the clearest crystal blue water you've ever seen came out and gave those prisoners water. I'll show it to you. It's amazing. What a cool story. This is a pavilion that was built in honor of that memory. The living water came pretty much by lightning strike on the ground. guys and the story is well documented and uh, they built this in the remembrance of the prisoners and that story so uh, very neat if you like just adjacent to where the wall actually was that's a reenactment of the wall there the original one obviously fell apart after all those years but they built it in the exact same location shows we're on the bottom of this hill that lightning stroke and this life giving water was giving for these prisoners for they had lived. So amazing story. Part of uh, part of one of God's miracles I guess here at this prison. And it you know continues to run today. Here it's running pulls up and it streams down. Just a beautiful story, guys. Look at that water flowing to this day. How amazing is that? And that water is clear. Clear as can be. This is where the prison walls were. Inside the prison area, they don't really cut the grass that much. Kind of shows you where the prison area was, where the wall is, and have the spring sprung up here on that day. Just amazing. Pretty cool Civil War history. I'll take you back over to the placard I shot earlier. It's called Providence Springs. It happened on August 14th, August 14th, 1864. There's a picture. How amazing is that? And there's the prison walls. So here's a depiction, guys, of the top, tight stockade fencing around Anderson Prison. It shows the poles that still exist underground. And that's how they knew where to build this reenactment wall and guard towers. That's a perspective. I'm 6'1", and that is almost three, four times my height. This here would have been the 
actual area where the Union soldiers were imprisoned. And that's the water that uh, sprung up. Just amazing, big hill. So look at the size of these walls. You weren't getting over. You weren't getting out. This is the perspective of uh, what it looked like inside. That's all they were allowed to see was what was through the cracks. It was very tall. Big giant doors and locks. Amazing. You know, I just wanted to make it clear that uh, there's good and bad in every war. Um, and it happened on both sides. We're not here to judge, it's history. So uh, you can't judge or you can't you know, reevaluate what happened in history. It is what it is. We've uh, moved on from it, we've gotten smarter, and hopefully we've gotten a lot smarter, okay? and we don't repeat our history. But that's why I always tell you guys, if you don't know your history, you're bound to repeat it. So learn what these guys and girls went through back then, and uh, know your history. Make sure that uh, you don't let your government overtake you or tell you what to do, you know, it's for the people, by the people. And that's what's important is, you know, we are our government. And when our government becomes tyrannical, you know, that's when you have to do what you have to do to defend your country and the principles of America. And, you know, the Civil War was also part of that. Uh, and there's different beliefs back then. And then thank God we've, uh, we've evolved from that. We've evolved from a lot of things. But history is so important, guys. And uh, this is part of it. Even though it's kind of a dark side of history, the Andersonville prison, it's, uh, it is history. So let's remember it, learn from it, and move on. So come on, guys. Don't mean to be grim or gray on this, but uh, kind of a sad part of the Civil War. But, you know, it has to be told. You know, you guys need to know, and uh, I know you guys want to know. So I'm glad I could bring you out here to Andersonville and see this part of history. So come on, let's look at some more. There's an overall view. That was a piece of stockade fencing we were at. Just below that is where the water and all that between the white pegs is where the wall actually was. That's the entire prison grounds and it was. Just giving you perspective. So this section here this is where the uh, post headquarters was and the commandant of the prison. And you can see the cannons. And they were protecting the prison from this vantage point. You see the old road was right here. And that was into the prison. And they still have some cans here depicting where they were established and the road that they guarded into the prison. And this was kind of the cannon buckshot vantage point. That's what they would load in these cans in case there was an uprising or problem. Here are all the monuments from the northern states to give tribute to the Union dead here in Andersonville. There's so many, that's from Wisconsin.
It's nice that they've erected these monuments. This one here is for in commemoration of uh, Clara Barton. She organized and administered effective measures for the relief of her soldiers in the field and aided in the great work preserving the names of more than 12,000 of the brave men who died here. So amazing, guys. And that's where the prison, we're actually in the prison stockade area now. And they've erected all these monuments in the honor of those lost here. So Andersonville prison, it's a dark period of time in the Civil War, but part of history and really neat. I really recommend you guys come out here and check this out for yourselves. Uh, it's a little warm. Here we are, September, almost end of September 2022. And it's pretty hot today. I'd say it's probably in the 90s. But uh, beautiful day. Show you guys the sight. I say little. This is where the uh, commander of the prison used to live, Captain Henry Wirtz. But uh, Andersonville, very tiny. Now, obviously, there's nobody in the town right now. It's a Sunday. So I can walk right here on Main Street. Show you a little bit of it. Well, it's got a couple of antique stores. Really cute little place. Got a little welcome center. You can do a visit of the Drummer Boy Museum store. Very cute little town. It's a little train station. And there's a view of it. Very tiny little town. Very cute. Gotta love this general store though. This is the train station where the Union prisoners were brought in by train. From this point here, they were taken over to the Andersonville Confederate Prison and marched over there and housed. Andersonville Prison was probably one of the darkest stories of the Civil War where many Union soldiers suffered great atrocities, disease, and died by the thousands. Almost 13,000 to be exact and were buried there in Andersonville National Cemetery. So I want to thank you guys for coming along and uh, being able to share this history with you. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe if you're not subscribed and uh, tell a friend about this uh, video. We'd love to uh, share it and show you a little bit about this history of Andersonville Prison, located here in uh, southern Georgia. I recommend you guys come out and take a look out for yourselves. Bye-bye, guys.